The US Bureau of Labor Statistics just came out with the June Consumer Price Index summary or the CPI data with the headline CPI rose 0.2% or 3% year over year increase and core CPI at 4.8%, which was a big beat. The general consensus before the release was 3.1% headline CPI and 5% core CPI. And this is very important data for the Federal Reserve's meeting that's happening in two weeks on July 25th and 26th, which I will be live on July 26th for Jerome Powell's meeting at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time or 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I apologize for not being able to go live this morning because I was working on several other things for my clients at the time. And if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to firesideshit.com slash coaching. And it was actually the first time I missed going live in 2023 for the CPI. But anyway, if you watched the last press conference with Jerome Powell, he had a very hawkish tone, even though they paused the rate hike for the first time in over a year. Not to mention that the Federal Reserve Committee also indicated that they're going to raise interest rates two more times in 2023, which I'll go over that later on. And let me quickly read you what the Consumer Price Index summary says. So the Consumer Price Index, we all know that it has risen 0.2% uh, in June on a seasonally adjusted basis after increasing 0.1% in May. Uh, and the All Items Index increased 3.0% before seasonal adjustment. And the index for shelter was the largest contributor uh, to all items increase. And with the index, I'm going to go over this later on, but the index for motor vehicle insurance also contributing. The food index increased 0.1% in June after increasing 0.2% the previous month, which is good news. And the index for food at home was unchanged over the month, while the index for food away from home rose 0.4% in June. And the energy index rose 0.6% in June as the major energy component indexes were mixed. But we were all expecting that energy to go up in the summertime. And the index for items less food and energy rose 0.2% in June, the smallest one month increase in that index since August 2021. So we're seeing a lot of deflationary indicators on this uh, CPI data and the indexes this is really good news for airline fares, communication, used cars and trucks and household furnishings and operations were among those that decreased over the month. So I am so happy to see the airline fares to go down finally. And I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And the all items, less food and energy index rose 0.8% over the last 12 months. So that would be the core CPI. So if I scroll all the way down here, this is the summary, right? So if you look at food, like I talked about, 0.2%, food away uh, at home is actually even at 0.0%. And then energy commodities uh, it went up by 0.8%. Fuel oil uh, actually at negative 0.4%. Gasoline went up by 1%. Uh, and let's take a look. The used cars and trucks went down negative 0.5% after it went up 4.4% each month for the last two months. So take a look at it here, 4.4 and 4.4 right here, right? And that would be 8.8% just in two months. That's That was crazy. And then the new vehicles, there were no changes at all. It was just at 0.0%. And apparel is still going up consistently at 0.3% every month. And right now we're looking at 3.1% uh, year to year adjustments. Um, let's see, shelter still going up at 0.4%. So right now we're looking at 7.8% annual adjustment basis. And then transportation services, it has finally kind of calmed down a little bit after 0.8% increase last month. And then now we're looking at 0.1%. And medical, medical care services actually flatlined at 0.0%. And I highlighted some items down here so that you guys can take a look here. New vehicles. It went to 0.0%, no changes. And then the used cars and trucks at negative 0.5%. And here's the one downside that's going still going up. That would be the motor vehicle maintenance and repair. So that has gone up a lot at 
and then the motor vehicle insurance at 1.7%. So if you watch my recent video about the 30 day money challenge, I mentioned the motor vehicle insurance and how to shop around and uh, find a cheaper deal. But almost every insurance company right now is going to be pretty expensive because they're trying to cover the cost for all the vehicles, the parts that the uh, the low supply back in the days, and they're uh, they were losing money on the every quarter. Like Geico, Progressive, Allstate, they were bleeding money because of increase in car accidents in 2021 and 2022, and the uh, the supplies chain shortages on the the car parts and the vehicle replacements during those years so that's why those fees the motor vehicle insurance have gone up tremendously and then the airline fares take a look at this on the bottom it's negative 8.1 percent that is the biggest decrease that i've seen in a long time so that is really good news if you're looking to travel in the summertime or in the fall or winter and if you take a look at southwest airlines they're actually showing a lot of airfares uh, that uh, that are going to be available all the way out to February, and they're actually on sale too. They're trying to sell those tickets at a discount. So I always keep an eye on the uh, the airfare uh, discount alerts. So you can use like Google Price and get those price alerts too. And if I scroll down, eggs have cracked down on the uh, the prices. I'm sorry, that was a terrible dad joke. But eggs have gone down negative 7.3%. And last month, they actually made a headline when it went down by 13.8%, right? So that was pretty good. Uh, let's take a look here. I think that's about it. But the uh, the motor vehicle insurance was the, uh, it was just the, the biggest one. But anyway, and the Wall Street started to price in on the potential interest increase at the Federal Reserve meeting on July 26, which is two weeks from now. And they're gonna start debating whether to raise interest rates for the 11th time in this tightening cycle or to keep them where they are at the current Fed funds rate at 5 to 5.25 percent. To me, it's still mind boggling that they decided to pause the interest rate uh, interest hike, but they're still looking to raise it two more times in 2023. So why not just raise it in June and July to just get it over with? And I don't think Jerome Powell really provided a straight answer during the last press conference. And June's employment data that was released last Friday showed a tighter labor market. And hopefully that's a sign for the Fed to loosen up on the uh, the tightening monetary policy. Non-farm payrolls increased by 209,000 in June, which was far below the consensus estimate of 240,000. The unemployment rate uh, decreased by 0.1% to 3.6% for the month of June. The bad news about the employment report is that the wage numbers were stronger than expected, which is not a good sign for the Federal Reserve because they're closely monitoring the wage numbers to factor in their decision to raise the interest rates. Average hourly earnings increased by 0.4% for the month and 4.4% from a year ago. The average work week also increased by 0.1 hours to 34.4 hours. So these figures are showing the labor market is losing some momentum with a high interest rate environment. And people are spending less than what they used to in 2021 and 2022. And I'm interested to see if the labor market is going to continue to trend down in July, August and September and after the FOMC meeting in two weeks. They're not scheduled to have another meeting until September 19th and 20th, October 31st and November 1st, and then December 12th and 13th to close out the year. And we're gonna get the summary of economic projections in September and December and get a better idea of what the Fed is projecting with the GDP, unemployment rate and PC inflation. And I wanna quickly show you where all the jobs went to in the month of June. The biggest area for growth was actually healthcare uh, and social assistance with 65,200 jobs added just in the month of June. And I think the medical industry is going to be very strong for the next 20 to 30 years with a large population of baby boomers retiring from the workforce. So medical professionals will be in high demand. 
The other category was the government sector, which added over 60,000 jobs just in the month of June. This is a combination of local, state, and federal government sectors. And I'm really interested to find out why more people are attracted to government work where they have historically experienced labor shortages for many years. And the government pretty much has to compete with the private sector for salaries, bonuses, and other benefits to attract talent. But we need talented people in the government to maintain our critical infrastructure, construction, and run administrative offices, right? And construction has been really resilient even during the high interest rate environment. They added 23,000 jobs for the second straight month. And a lot of people, including myself, thought uh, that the housing market would slow down significantly. But the infrastructure bill that got passed in 2022 allowed it, uh, the private sector to have more contracts, which allowed more jobs in the market. On the downside though, if you scroll down here, wholesale trade, transportation, uh, warehousing, and retail trade lost a total of 21,700 jobs in the month of June. And it looks like job cuts could continue to reduce labor expenses in those sectors. And if I'm being completely honest, I'm a little worried about the lagging data, and I can't help but wonder if the Fed is going to end up overreacting to the core CPI data. In my opinion, I think it'll be a mistake for the Fed to continue raising interest rates for the rest of 2023. But according to the CME group, the markets are now pricing in a roughly 90% chance that the Federal Reserve raises interest rates by another 25 basis points at the July 26th policy meeting. There are many economists uh, who are worried about the recession if the Fed raises more interest rates in July and September, and which is going to put the Fed funds rate at 5.5 to 5.75%. And I'm afraid that they might be too laser focused on the 2% target inflation rate. And they forgot about the possibility of deflation in the coming year due to the lagging data. Now remember that we don't get any of this data until a month after the fact, right? So we could potentially see more slowdown in the fall and possibly winter of 2023 or in the Q1 or of uh, 2024. We'll see. I could be wrong and I really hope that I'm wrong. And lastly, I just want to quickly say that if you're carrying a balance on your credit card right now, you need to pay it off as soon as possible. And I have a lot of financial uh, free financial resources like the debt payoff spreadsheets that you can download for free by visiting firesitcha.com slash resources. And these interest rates are going to continue to go up throughout 2023. It's the same thing with HELOC and other variable interest rate loans. And I know many of you ask me in the comment section if it's a good idea to take out a HELOC. It's never a good idea to take out a HELOC against your home, especially your primary home. Why even leverage the house that you're living in and risk it when you don't have enough cash reserve to cover it? And are you really willing to pay nine or 10% in interest just to take a line of credit out of your primary home? And what if you lost your job and you can't make the HELOC payments anymore? you could potentially lose your home. But if you're still curious about the HELOC and you wanna know how to work on paying down your debt fast, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.